Federal Reserve is expected to announce another rate hike just moments from now. This move would mark the fourth rate increase this year. Investors and economists believe the Federal Reserve will raise the federal funds rate by three quarters of a percentage point today for the second consecutive month. Now, this action would bring the benchmark interest rate to the highest it has been since the summer before the COVID-19 pandemic. Ted Rossman is joining us from here in Studio 57. He's a senior industry analyst from Bankrate.com. And we have CBS News political correspondent Caitlin Huey Burns, who joins us now from the White House. All right, so Ted, we're going to start with you so that you can explain this to me in small words. <laughs> if we see this expected rate hike from the Fed today, what does that mean for practical terms, for buyers, for the economy, and even for the president as he goes forward towards the midterms in November? Where you're going to feel it the most is on variable rate debt. So that would be your credit card, your home equity line of credit. Now, if you have a fixed rate mortgage or a fixed rate car loan, you're not going to be affected. New buyers, however, would be. And this is having a big dampening effect on the housing market already. So if you're an idiot like me who's still renting, you probably should have bought four years ago when your brother did. Is that what you're telling me? Well, we wish we had the time machine, right? But it's super expensive. I mean, that's yeah. the other thing is that it's not just interest rates, but it's also that home prices are way up. Car prices are way up. It gets back to this big topic of inflation, which is really what's driving right. the Fed to raise rates. They're trying to get a handle on inflation. Which we will get back to with you about. Uh, but I want to ask Caitlin really quickly uh, to break it down for us. Politically, what does this mean for the Biden administration, this imminent rate hike? You know, this is obviously going to, you know, interest rates and inflation, all of this is something that is going to affect his campaigning going forward. Mm -hmm. what, will, what will the administration gain or lose out of this? Yeah, well, Tanya, this is something that the White House is going to be paying very close attention to and something they've been asked about really all week as they've been talking about the economy and talking about the R word, recession, and whether or not we're heading into one. Uh, but what's significant here is that the Fed is a separate entity. The White House has no control over the Fed, and of course that's by design so that the Fed is not, you know, uh, succumbing to any sort of political pressure. Um, but at the same time, you know, this is all about inflation as Ted mentioned, and that, of course, is a political problem for this White House. Yesterday, the White House economic advisor told us that inflation is a top priority. They know that even as they say there are positive indications in the economy, that job, you know, the, the unemployment rate is low, uh, other sectors that they're looking at um, are, are okay and show kind of steady. They know that the economy or the uh, market has been shrinking, and they are concerned about, you know, how voters, how everyday people are internalizing that. And we're seeing that kind of registering in polling, but also in um, data points like the Consumer uh, Confidence uh, Index, which dropped yesterday as well. So the White House is in this difficult situation where inflation is a huge issue. Things cost a lot of money now. Uh, people, while the economy may look good in terms of the jobs numbers, they know that people are just not feeling good about the economy. And that becomes a political problem for the people in power. All if right. Stand by because yeah. I think we have that number. Yeah, we do. And, and it is as expected. The Fed raised it by three quarters of a percentage point, Ted. So they really had telegraphed that in advance. What I'll be looking for at the bottom of the hour when Fed Chair Jerome Powell meets the media is what happens next? Will there be clues about the next meeting? Investors are kind of battling it out. Is it going to be a 50 basis point hike, 75? There's a cumulative effect to all of this. We've already seen, as you said, two and a quarter points this year. They're not done. I mean, we could easily see another point by the end of the year. That's where it really starts to add up on people. But this is not an exact science, right? Yeah. I, I heard someone liken it to kind of chucking darts, and they're hoping <laughs> to hit the target, but there's no guarantee because there's a chance they could hike rates too much and then it ends up exacerbating what could be a recession, correct? That's a worry, yeah. So what the Fed's trying to do is to get a handle on inflation. So they're putting the brakes on the economy. There's a lag, as you said, maybe six, even 12 months to what they do. Do they hit the brakes too hard? The other thing is the Fed is mostly influencing demand. So are people interested in taking out new loans? Are businesses investing? They can't control the supply side as much. 
And while this sounds like right. you know, sort of a college econ class, really, at, at the end of the day, it's all about COVID and the supply chain yeah. got disrupted and it's been but kind of wait, a mess. And that's what led to the demand, right? People, there was more demand for things that you couldn't get. So prices went up for the things that were being produced. So is that part of it being eased at all? Is the supply chain slowly, are the wheels being greased there? It's starting to get better, but there's a lot of oddities in the economy now. It started out with COVID. Then I think it evolved when Russia invaded Ukraine. Then we started to see all the oil and gas impacts and mm -hmm. other commodities. And that's where the economy is not behaving normally right now. And that's where we see all these conflicting data points. And that just makes the Fed's job that much harder. So much harder. And Caitlin, I want to ask you, you know, this morning we heard President Biden, he was in the Rose Garden. He was talking about how he's feeling better from COVID. And he made it a point to mention how COVID has improved, how the outcomes from COVID have improved mm -hmm. since he took office. Was that him trying to remind America of some of the good things his administration had done before we see this rate hike and then potentially different economic numbers that may or may not be good coming out tomorrow? Yeah, it's, a, it's a, a couple of complicating factors for the White House, if you think about it. On one hand, this is a president who ran against ending the pandemic. Um, they have worked to get vaccines out, of course, but then, you know, it was essentially inevitable that he would uh, get COVID. And so part of what today was, was about showing, look, I'm testing negative. The, this is because I got vaccinated and boosted um, a part of a message for the people, but also to say, look, I'm back at work and to kind of show a president in command. But of course, hovering over all of this is the biggest liability for this president, which is the economy that, you know, we're just a few months away from the midterm elections. Democrats know that they, um, you know, face an uphill battle on keeping the House and the Senate in control. Um, so the political dynamic here is really focused on what the president can do. Part of it is messaging, you know, trying to tell people, I understand your pain. I know prices are high. I know gas prices are high. But here's what we're trying to do about it. Something that they're, you know, celebrating today is the passage in the Senate of the CHIPS bill. You've probably heard a lot about this, those chips that are pretty much in everything that we use, um, every electronic, you know, automobiles. Um, this is going to be something that they think will address the supply chain issues and also kind of create some confidence in the market which will also have an effect over all of this. So that's what they're championing. Um, when you look at the Republican side, however, you know, they're in this uh, situation, too, where on one hand, politically, it looks good for you if the economy is not doing well for the party in power, which you're not in power. But on the other hand, you don't want to be seen as cheering for a negative economy, right? right, right. Um, you want to be seen as trying to, you know, do what you can. So there are questions for Republicans about what you would do differently. And that's something that is going to be kind of a defining issue for this midterm election. All right, so joining the conversation now is Michelle Singletary. She's a personal finance columnist for The Washington Post. Michelle, thanks for joining on. Um, so employment numbers remain strong. This goes back to the thing we've been talking to Ted about, this sort of mixed economic messaging, right? Employment numbers remain strong, meaning employers have so far remained undeterred, employers and I guess business owners, uh, undeterred by borrowing costs. Should we expect this trend to continue or what, what point can the rise sort of interest rates here start to affect employers and their employment outlook? Well, if the cost of borrowing continues to go up, obviously employers are going to think, well, you know, maybe I should pull back. Maybe I won't be, maybe I'll hire one person instead of two because their costs are going up. So we need to look at all of the factors to determine how bad the economy is going. And, and what I've been trying to do in my column, and actually Ted has been so great to help me as I've been writing about credit reports is that, or, or credit cards, is that we don't want people who can afford to spend to pull back. Those are the consumers who have saved to go on vacation. They've saved to do that mm -hmm. home improvement. And maybe they've got to pay a little bit more for the car that they want, but they have it in their budget to mm -hmm. do it. Those folks, we need to not panic because you are <laughs> going to be the engine that keeps us um, from maybe going into a recession or having the recession <laughs> last longer than it needs to last. I love that. That's such a good point. Don't panic. If you have the money to spend, don't panic. Keep spending. <laughs> yeah, but what you <laughs> Tell someone not to panic. The first thing they do is panic. So, uh, I mean, Ted, right. we keep talking about this, this R word, the recession, and it's almost like, you know, the, the fear of the thing can create the thing, right? So when you That's look right. at these different factors, um, 
What do you think when you when you're looking at these rate hikes when you're looking at the economy overall, if when these GDP numbers come out tomorrow, if we see a second straight quarter of decline to you, does that equate to a recession or do all these other factors kind of muddy what's the traditional definition of that word? To a lot of people, it would. What's funny is that for a lot of the past 10 years, I'll say we talked about this jobless recovery, that it took a long time to come out of the Great Recession, took a very long time for unemployment to go down. People now are starting to talk about this term about a job full recession. So, you know, we had the jobless recovery. Now we may be having a job full recession. What you can do personally is just practice those fundamentals. Mm -hmm. So improve the emergency savings. I know it's easier said than done, but to the extent that you can save and pay down debt and really just control what you can, because a lot is out of our control. But that is tightening the, you know, that's, that means spending less, right? And it gets what hard you, when prices go up. It yeah. gets harder and harder to save. It does. Well, so, Caitlin, I want to turn back to you now. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell will hold a briefing at the conclusion of today's meeting. What can we expect him to say? Well, this will be an announcement of this rate hike and possibly explaining why the Fed is taking this step. As you mentioned, this is the fourth time this year that they have increased rates, and this is all about uh, trying to tame inflation. Now, it's important to remember that the Fed is a separate entity from the White House, from Congress. It operates on its own, and that's why, you know, it, it does so, because it doesn't want to be uh, entwined in any sort of political decision about this. What's interesting, though, about Powell is, remember, he's a holdover from the Trump administration. He was uh, re-nominated uh, by President Biden and, of course, reconfirmed by the Senate. Um, but he is a more, you know, moderate Republican of that mold and Biden decided to keep him on. Um, now, they are separate entities, but this is something that the White House has to respond to. You know, this question about how people are feeling about the economy, what raising rates means for inflation, but also a question of, you know, will they continue to raise rates going forward? Is there a risk of kind of overdoing it? That's something that has been asked of the White House. And they say, look, that's separate. Here's what we're trying to do to control prices and try to do things to bring prices down for the average American. Uh, so these are two you know, entities that are completely separate um, for political reasons, but are you know, intertwined in terms of the politics. And Michelle, we've been talking about how it's going to take a while to see the results of any of these policies, and there's a bit of a, a whip around that comes back. So when do you think consumers are finally going to be able to see some of these high costs noticeably fall? And will today's impact have any action on... Uh, Will today's action, excuse me, have any impact on that timeline? Will it come about faster because of what the Fed did today? Well, for as consumers, there's not much you can do except manage your own personal finances. So I looked, there's really three pockets of consumers. Those who are struggling, they were struggling for the pandemic and, and rising inflation and all these costs hurts them even more. And so for those, we say, you know, apply for whatever benefits you can, cut if you haven't already cut, um, and maybe even do some shared housing to cut the biggest part of your budget, which is housing. And then there's the middle group group of Americans that are maybe living paycheck to paycheck, but just, you know, doing sort of okay. And then those in the middle who are doing pretty okay. They, you know, they've got good fat savings. They are putting money in their retirement account. They're taking vacations. Those folks, those middle folks, you might want to continue doing what you're doing. However, to Ted's point, make sure that your emergency savings is where it needs to be in case something happens. We are truly in a recession. And then they're prosperous Americans. Those who are, you know, it's uncomfortable. It, it stings when you have to pay a little bit more, but you're in the position to continue you to do what you're doing. Just make sure you've got that emergency savings, continue to save for your retirement, um, and then watch your spending. Maybe you go out, you know, twice a week instead of your typical three times a week so that you make sure that you have the savings you need if, mm -hmm. in fact, we do uh, uh, barrel into a recession. I just want to note quickly, perhaps not surprisingly, the markets are reacting favorably to this expected news from the Fed. They are uh, Stock prices are going up a little bit. So uh, I want to thank everyone, Caitlin Huey-Burns, Ted Rossman, and Michelle Singletary. Thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it.